so I am a person who has always been obsessed with those things that kind of tell you stuff about yourself and by that I mean Buzzfeed quizzes, personality tests, even horoscopes. I used to literally write the horoscopes for the school magazine. Personality tests, I love them. The two main ones that are going around at the moment are the Myers-Briggs test, which is the 16 personalities one where you've got four letters that you identify with and the Enneagram test where there's nine numbers and it's all about like what's most important to you and what's your biggest fear and stuff like that. My Myers-Briggs type is INFJ which is the advocate. The one that is my favourite at the moment for some reason <laughs> is the Enneagram test and I am a four wing three. I thought I might read through the description of type four people and I don't know, you guys should take the test and let me know what you want in the comments and if you identify with any of these things. I just find them really interesting though sometimes it gets quite dark so that should be interesting. So type four is the individualist. The sensitive, introspective type, expressive, dramatic, self-absorbed and temperamental. Type four in brief. Let's see what I relate to here. Fours are self-aware, sensitive and reserved. Yes, yes and yes. <laughs> uh, I literally made a video not that long ago about being self-aware, perhaps too self-aware. They are emotionally honest, creative and personal aka my YouTube channel, <laughs> but can also be moody and self-conscious. This is also true. Withholding themselves from others due to feeling vulnerable and defective, they can also feel disdainful and exempt from ordinary ways of living. I always want to be kind of different, like separate. Like I, I don't want to be like my parents, though I think that's quite a common thing, but like I like feeling unique and special. I mean, who doesn't? I want to be like the the quirky uh not relatable teen i get kind of like irritated when people say i'm relatable even though like i know that's not a bad thing but like i'm like i am a unique special human being you cannot relate to me i am different <laughs> at their best they are inspired and highly creative i am very very creative like if you know me in real life if you watch my youtube channel you'll know i just i love creating things writing making videos, editing, coming up with new ideas to make things. I'm like, I want to write a book. I want to do a blog. I want to do a video blog. I want to write a web series. I want to like, it's, it's bad in a way. Like I just want to do so much. Basic fear that they have no identity or personal significance. Basic desire to find themselves and their significance to create an identity. Yeah, basically. This is why I love these tests because I want to like find my unique identity and I want to like, find myself. <gasps> Key motivations want to express themselves in their individuality, aka my YouTube channel, to create and surround themselves with beauty. Oh my gosh, this is so accurate. My friend C, we always have arguments over whether Apple products or like other products like Google and Samsung and stuff are better. And my argument for why I like Apple products more is that they're really pretty. <laughs> I like surrounding myself with beautiful things. My room, Literally, I have a wall here that is just covered in pictures and pretty things. To maintain certain moods and feelings, I kind of relate to that. Like, I just, I want to be happy, man. I want to be happy. To withdraw to protect their self-image. Yeah, I feel like maybe that's true. I definitely, like, sometimes I don't want to make videos and stuff because I want to protect the image that I've portrayed of myself as being, like, a positive, happy person. And when I'm not feeling positive, energetic, happy, enthusiastic, I don't want to portray that online because I want to protect the image of Emma Popcorn that I've created. And I know that's not necessarily the best choice but that's sometimes how I feel. To take care of emotional needs before attending to anything else. Oh boy, that's a huge problem that I've been having recently because I've just like, I've not been feeling too good. So I feel like I can't do anything, which just makes me feel worse. Uh, so I'm gonna try and change that. I'm changing that right now. I'm doing a thing. Healthy fours are honest with themselves. They own all of their feelings and can look at their motives, contradictions and emotional conflicts without denying or whitewashing them. To be fair, that kind of encompasses like how I like to analyse my feelings and emotions and motives and try and like use that for like creativity and to organise my life and also to empathize with other people. Healthy fours are willing to reveal highly personal and potentially shameful things about themselves because they are determined to understand the truth of their experience so that they can discover who they are and come to terms with their emotional history. 
that's something I've been working on at the moment. I uh, tweeted the other day that I have depression, which was real hard because that's the kind of thing that I like to hide because I like to keep this this image of me being really happy and enthusiastic. Not entirely true, but um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm getting there. Right, this one is so accurate, okay, but it might get a little bit depressing. Nevertheless, fools often report that they feel they are missing something in themselves, although they may have difficulty identifying exactly what that something is. Is it willpower, social ease, self-confidence, emotional tranquility? All of which they see in others, seemingly in abundance. Oh boy! <laughs> Ages ago, uh, literally like years ago, I was writing this like poem on my computer. It wasn't really a poem, it was more just me like putting all my emotions out there. It literally went, I miss, I miss, I miss. What do I miss? I don't know! <laughs> I always feel like I've got something missing in my life and I'm not sure what it is. But there's something. Given time and sufficient perspective, Fords generally recognise that they are unsure about aspects of their self-image, their personality or ego structure itself. They feel that they lack a clear and stable identity, particularly a social persona that they feel comfortable with. This is true. I feel like a completely different person on different days, like, is kind of mad. Which is kind of why, like, I have an issue with YouTube and having, like, a consistent style because I often just, I want to do different things and I want to experiment with different types of me in different ways of being creative and I do struggle to just like have a stable like doing the same thing all the time. I like to be kind of boo 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 what am I doing and it's because that's who I am as a person. While it is true that fours often feel different from others they do not really want to be alone. They may feel socially awkward or self-conscious but they deeply wish to connect with people who understand them and their feelings. This is so accurate because this is why I was so confused because I was like I'm an introvert, like I'm so, like I'm such an introvert. I like to have, have time on my own, but I'm like so obsessed with people. I love learning about people, talking to people, learning about other people's experiences. The romantics of the Enneagram, they long for someone to come into their lives and appreciate the secret self that they, are pri that they have privately nurtured and hidden from the world. I'm not great at conveying who I am to new people, um, I'm quite closed off. But with close friends, I'm like completely different. I'm like so open. And I feel like I'm quite similar in front of a camera as I am around my close friends, which is a bit odd. Okay, now this one is really accurate, but kind of not fun. Fours typically have problems with negative self-image and chronically low self-esteem. <laughs> they attempt to compensate for this by cultivating a fantasy self. <clears throat> Emma Popcorn, an idealised self-image which is built up primarily in their imagination. By the way, I don't necessarily think my online persona is like a complete fantasy self, but it's definitely down that road. In the course of their lives, fours may try several different identities on for size, basing them on styles, preferences or qualities they find attractive in others. That is really interesting because I feel like when I was about 13, 14, I was a completely different person to who I am now. If you've been watching my channel for a while or you've gone back and watched my old videos, you'll know every year I'm a different person. I think that might be a generally accepted thing. Like people grow and change, but like I completely transform from one stage of my life to the next. I go through like such set phases depending on like what I like at the time, who I idolize at the time, who are my role models and I don't think that's particularly unhealthy, but it's just it's just true. This is gonna be such a long video, but I'm enjoying it so much. I don't know if it'll be that enjoyable to other people, but hey. But underneath the surface, they still feel uncertain about who they really are. True dat. The problem is that they base their identity largely on their feelings. Mmm. <laughs> Too true! When fours look inward, they see a kaleidoscopic, ever-shifting pattern of emotional reactions. Indeed, fours accurately perceive a truth about human nature, that it is dynamic and ever-changing. I just said that. But because they want to create a stable, reliable identity from their emotions, they attempt to cultivate only certain feelings while rejecting others. Some feelings are seen as me, while others are not me. I see myself as an independent person, so that means that I force myself not to be too dependent on other people because I want to be an independent person. I see myself as a lazy person, so I don't do work because I accept that that's who I am. No. One of the biggest challenges force face is learning to let go of feelings from the past. I'm a hugely nostalgic person. I love like listening to music that brings back emotions of the past. I literally spend so much time just reading back my old diaries, even the really depressing ones, because I just really enjoy like 
going back in time in that way. Fours grow by learning to see that much of their story is not true, or at least it is not true anymore. The old feelings begin to fall away once they stop telling themselves their old tale. It is irrelevant to who they are right now. I think I definitely do need to like let go of who, of this identity that I've built for myself at least a little because it's so like, set in stone and I need to like move on because a big issue I've been going through at the moment was the fact that I built so much identity in being a straight A student and then now because A levels are really hard and I've just been really tired all the time I've been finding it hard to keep up that identity when really I shouldn't be placing my identity in my grades anyway. I need to let go of that old tale of me being a straight A student because it's irrelevant to me right now. I really like this part, personal growth recommendations for Enneagram type fours and I find this really interesting because it's really good advice for me. Do not pay so much attention to your feelings. They are not a true source of support for you as you probably already know. Always remember that your feelings are telling you something about yourself as you are at this particular moment, not necessarily more than that. BAM! Great advice! Avoid putting off things until you are in the right mood. Oh, this is such good advice for me. Commit yourself to productive, meaningful work that will contribute to your good and that of others, no matter how small the contribution may be. Actually, you are happiest when you are working. This is true! That is, activating your potentials and realising yourself. You will not find yourself in a vacuum or while waiting for inspiration to strike. So connect and stay connected with the real world. Yes! A wholesome self-discipline takes many forms, from sleeping regular hours, to working regularly, to exercising regularly, regularly, regularly. <laughs> Since it comes from yourself, a healthy self-discipline is not contrary to your freedom or individuality. Avoid lengthy conversations in your imagination. Oh man! That's really helpful because I always do this thing, especially when I'm like lying trying to get to sleep. I like imagine conversations I'm going to have with people, which is, a, I know it's a weird thing to do. These conversations are essentially unreal and at best only rehearsals for action. Although, as you know, you almost never say or do what you imagine you will. Instead of spending time imagining your life and relationships, begin to live them. Oh, oh. <laughs> I really enjoyed going through that. I'm also a wing three. Um, Your wing is like your secondary one and mine is the achiever which is number three um the success oriented pragmatic type adaptive excelling driven and image conscious which i think kind of fits with my individualist one so let me know in the comments what enneagram type you are or what myers-briggs type you are if you haven't done the tests yet then i'll put them in the description down below or you could just read through the descriptions and choose one though that might take a while because there's quite a few types. I find it also quite interesting trying to like guess what other people are and like finding out what they actually are. I don't know why I get such a buzz from this. It's because I'm a four. Goodbye. Oh my gosh, when did that become my ending? I have an ending now. It's goodbye. <laughs> I hate it. Don't know